What's up everyone, hope you're well. Welcome back to a video here. We're gonna be talking around the New Zealand versus Tonga game. Very anticipated matchup here. With Tonga really developing as a incredible football squad, uh, real great culture obviously, and that comes out in every game they play. And the amount of you know, New Zealand, the Tonga, the, the Maldives, the, the, the Cook Island boys, there's, there's a lot going on here that uh, you know, are bringing a lot of guys to, to NRL. And, Guys that are really dominant in our in you know, in our league, the NRL league. So, very very exciting game. It's going to be early on Saturday afternoon at three twenty. So we'll have the the female matchup, the New Zealand versus Tongan game first, and then we've got uh, this game here, the the men's to follow. So, firstly, we've got the confirmed lineup lineup for New Zealand, and then we've got a possible lineup for for Tonga there. But we'll start with with the keys for this side, and and we'll look at the spine to start off with as to you know if we think that they could be the team to come out the victors. And when you've got Manu at, at number one, I think that was a really good decision. As much as you know, I love Tamari Martin and you know, we'll speak about him you know, making this squad, obviously pretty cool achievement, but having Manu in centers over fullback in this squad, when you don't have Teddy there, I think Manu is a clear next, you know, obviously Teddy not uh, you know, for, for Roosters there, but Manu is the, the clear number one player in this team for me anyway, the, in the back line that could, that could come out and dominate. When you've got him at one, you've got Dylan Brown at six, Hughes at seven, and then you've got Smithy at nine and you know Joey Tarpany at 13. That creates a really, really strong spine there. And I think this this alone gives them a great opportunity for them to win this game. And then if you're looking at the outside backs for a start, you've got Malatalo, who's an incredible finisher, along with Jordan Rapina, who's been in, in this team for a long time. Peter Hiku, I think it's a really, really well-deserved uh, you know, notch in his belt to, to be back in this team. He's obviously played a fair bit for the Kiwis, but... He's been in great form for the Cowboys this year, and I feel like he deserves it. Neil Corre getting his opportunity to play in the centers, having been in and out of the Eels team all year, I think is a, a real uh, you know, real test to him and, and you know, testament to his work ethic and, and, and a big well done to, to him for this one. In terms of you know forwards and experience, get a massive tick, the, the Warriors, uh, the New Zealand squad does here with Jesse Brom and Fisher Harris being you know, your props is incredible. Papali'i being one of the premier second rowers. I'm glad he, they've got him in the 11 jersey rather than 13. You know, Tarpany playing eight, 10, 13 isn't gonna matter too much. I think he's got a little bit more ball play than what Fisher Harris does, for example. I think he's gonna be a leader up front. Then to have Kenny Brom in the 12 jersey as well. And massive shout out to Kieran Foran, who you know, obviously plays one of his, you know, a lot of games he's played for New Zealand and to get back on this bench and, and you know, be able to have a little bit of flair and come out and do well there. I think it's a great one for him. To have Nelson off the bench, Britton Nakora on the bench as well as Leota. I think it's a very, very tough team to come out and beat. Probably one of the better teams that I've seen from New Zealand in a good while. And we'll shout out to, to all the guys in reserves there. Jordan Riki, we've got uh, Wittini Zelesniak. We've got Tamari Martin, who we, who we mentioned briefly before. They're just a, you know, a tremendous achievement. The last time he played was in 2018. And you know, he's only played, I think, eight games in a row this season you know, in his return. And to be back in this squad, a bit, you know, it means so much to him. Scotty Sorensen, I think, really deserves his spot. He's been great off the bench for Panthers and obviously, you know, them winning the comp last year and, and he does a, a great job for him. Aaron Clark gets his opportunity. You know, a lot of people spoke about Aaron as a guy that probably shouldn't be getting that hooker spot or, you know, four Titans or, you know, probably wouldn't be able to, to do it, for example. And, and he's come out and had a, a pretty solid season in amongst them not playing so well. Kevin Marlowe's in there and obviously uh, Griffin Neem, who's had a, a really nice start to the year for the Cowboys. So that's the New Zealand team and, as I said, it's going to be one, I think, obviously the guys up, up, up front, giving them a great platform, and then they've got the spine to really drag, you know, drag them around the park. I find that this is going to be a pretty hard team to beat, and I think this is a squad that could that could come up pretty you know, pretty nicely against one of the Origin teams, or even you know, have a chance of beating an Australian team or something like that in the, in the World Cup that's coming up at the end of the year. So that's the New Zealand squad. Here we've got a possible lineup for the Tongans, and what we do see, though, is Staggs is going to be moving from centers into the sixth position and Amone is going to play at number seven. So Katoa from the from the Panthers there won't be playing. And yeah, fair enough. Uh, we obviously haven't seen him in the NRL. So them being able to move Staggs to a more of a running six role and Amone going to getting a seven. This, to be honest with you, the spine for this squad is the main worry. Obviously, you know, New Zealanders have a, a premier you know, one, six, seven, nine, and, and 13. And, you know, if we're looking at this lineup here, we've got Cola potentially going to be starting in the one jersey. And to be honest with you, like he's been playing center all year. He's not a, you know, someone that's played a lot of fullback. 
you know, really at all uh, for for the Eagles or in the NRL in general. So to be coming up against this premier outfit in New Zealand and hasn't played much, obviously a little bit of a tough one. He's he's talented enough that he'll be able to he'll be able to do it right, but still a slight worry. And then we look at six and seven. Stags hasn't played a lot of six. We've got Amone who hasn't been leading his team around, which he's going to have to do in this game, which is a, a slight issue. We've got Silva Havili who's playing a bench middle role for the Bunny, so hasn't been playing any nine all year. Who, who has done a decent amount of nine for Raiders, but you know, is he going to be able to do that on the bigger stage? I'm not exactly sure. And you've also got Tamalala in the 13th, which is nice. If we're looking at their best spots in their side, their forward pack is going to rival what we see in the New Zealand squad. We've got Takeaho, we've got Adam Fanua Blake, Tupanua, Colin Matangi, and also Jason Tamalala. So all guys that could really rival what we saw, saw in the New Zealand squad. But it's just those spine positions that I think is going to cause a few issues. We've got Penasini here on the wing. You've got Siena Katoa. We've got Moses Suli there, who are all, you know, obviously good players, but I think are just slightly below where the other squad at, is at the moment. And then, yeah, you've got the bench. And we're looking at guys like Ola Kawatu, who, you know, is probably going to play bench in this game, which is crazy. You know, him or Colin Matangi will start, I would say. But, you know, him, Pango Jr., and obviously... Mo Fodawaka, Tavita Totola is, is great also, but you know, not as good as those other three guys. This is where they have a great chance of winning this game. If they can if they can sneak away with this one, it would be from their forwards and just their continuous, continuously uh, relentless push through the middle and being able to score tries on those edges with guys like Kolomatangi, Tupanua, and, and Ola Kawatu, I think is where they're going to they're gonna win this game if they have that opportunity. And it's just going to come from their defense. If we're looking at the other guys in the New Zealand squad, Plenty of attacking weapons, right? You have good defensive halves, which is great, and Manu's obviously solid. But just as a team working together, this is the only I think this is the only chance that Tonga is, has to win this game. If they can really play uh, together, I think they're, they're a good shot at winning this one. Obviously, the um, the squads uh, this squad isn't completely picked. I'm not sure who they are going to put in the centres for this game, but yeah, that's what I'm thinking for these two games. Let me know your general thoughts. New Zealand should come out and win this game. But as, as I said, if the, the defense of the Tongans can come out and do a great job, I think they would be, um, that would be their way of winning. We'll quickly uh, briefly mention Samoa, who had, which is the one I forgot earlier. Uh, coming up against Cook Islands, I'll play after this uh, that, that New Zealand Tonga game. And we've got a confirmed lineup for, for the Samoans. So we've got Charlie Staines in at one, which is cool. He always yeah, has a decent crack in there at uh, the one jersey. And then we say Taylor May and Isaac Tungo, which is going to be pretty cool. Jackson, Jackson Polo there and Nofa Luma. So a pretty nice back five, obviously pretty young, apart from Nofa. And then we go to the halves, we see Chanel, Harris, DeVita, and Milford, which would be really nice to see. Obviously plenty of uh, plenty of attack in there, which is cool. And then through the middle, we've got Stapau, Molo, Shusta, Sua, and Josh Alloye, which is lovely. And then Josh Tavanga in at nine. So a pretty solid lineup to be fair, with the, with the bench being Afoa, uh, Lenu, Palacia, uh, and also for Manu Brown, which is pretty cool. He's only had a few games this year and he gets in the 14 jersey with Volkman getting into number 19, which is pretty cool. So generally a solid team as well, probably slightly under the two we just spoke about. And they're coming up against the Cook Island squad who personally, I don't know a lot of the players. No, the Masters guys. Uh, who else we got there? Yeah, and then David Miley on the on the bench. Um, as to the guys I know. Let me know if you know a bunch of these guys from the Cook Islanders, if there's a lot of young fellas in there. That would be cool to, to hear about as well. Uh, but that's going to be a fun game as well on that um, on that afternoon. And then we've got the last games of PNG boys up against Fiji, which is going to be cool. We've got the confirmed lineup for PNG with Alex Johnson at the back, which is going to be cool to see him, especially with how well he's been playing this year. David Mead getting his opportunity in the centers. Lockie Lamb as guys that I personally know. And then the Fiji squad is a, a fun one as well. I'm not even going to try with a lot of the a lot of the names. Uh, Taruva is a good one. This one here, Rada, Radavaka Seravik, Seravalu. That's the one. Um, that's a hard one to say. I have to learn that one. That'd be cool. But um, plenty of solid, you know, great players in in that one as well. Again, for not all of them I know, but it's really going to be fun to watch all of those games and and really get yeah you know, and really get involved in learning a lot of the cultures as well, which is really the biggest part of this of this weekend before we get to to state of origin on Sunday night is to is to learn about all these cultures and I really you know hope that everyone gets out and embraces all of that. Obviously, learns a few of the names as well and how to how to say a lot of them. I hope the commentators are, are on to that in terms of you know pronunciation of a lot of these names. And let's just enjoy some good footy. Obviously, we've got a bit of a rest from mineral fantasy for this weekend. 
but uh, we'll jump into the to the draft stars origin game day as well, which we'll do a video on that come you know Friday or or Saturday. But I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Just a bit of an idea of you know how that game's going to go and, and potentially my predictions around that. So hope you enjoyed it. Catch you in the next one.